I'm Breeze Newell, and you're watching The Boss Company Presents. How I Learned to Sell Open-Ended Questions Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. No matter what time of day this video finds you, I hope it finds you well. Breeze here with The Boss Company. We provide customized consulting for businesses and individuals who have the willingness to believe, the desire to grow, and the courage to make it all happen. Uh, we're here to foster a habitual vision of greatness in all that we encounter, and we're here to serve. It's morning time for me, so I have my morning coffee, which means I am ready to talk to you about how I learn to sell using open-ended questions. Here we go. What type of questions do you ask when you're trying to sell someone something? Do you have a philosophy and a viewpoint and what is your viewpoint on certain questions that you ask? Is this something that you even consider? And when you consider it, why do you decide to use certain questions versus other questions when you're trying to sell someone something? These are all examples of open-ended questions. So what is an open-ended question? An open-ended question is a question that typically does not have a clear yes or no. So you have to elaborate a little bit. Open-ended questions usually begin with something like what, where, when, why, how, tell me more. Can you elaborate on that more and tell me why you think that? This sort of thing. Now with open-ended questions, you don't know what's coming because you're not giving the customer or the sales prospect options. You're not giving them A, B, or C. You're not giving them true, false. You're not asking them to say yes or no. You're actually trying to dig and get them to elaborate with an answer that's thoughtful. When we think about open-ended questions, typically it also isn't going to be a yes, no response. Um, usually a yes, no response is called a closed-ended question in most sales circles. I tend to believe that an open-ended question is just any question you don't know the answer to. You don't know what's coming already. You're not leading the customer. You're not feeding the customer with possible answers. So actually, a yes or a no, to me, does not disqualify something as being an open-ended question. All you're trying to do with open-ended questions is get the customer to engage with you, to elaborate. Um, open-ended questions have many different names. You know, they can be thought of as subjective questions, vague questions, storytelling questions, indefinite questions, um, ongoing questions because it keeps the conversation going and the narrative going, um, interpretive questions. Um, no matter what you call them, open-ended questions are really, really great at accomplishing a couple of different things. One thing open-ended questions can be utilized for is to build rapport. So you're trying to bond with your customer, right? You're trying to find common ground. You're trying to do what Robert Cialdini, who's a famous psychologist, calls um, form liking and familiarity. You want to find something to like about your customer. You want them to like you. People buy from people they like. And you use open-ended questions to bond. You're going to learn about your customer. You're going to ask them questions like, where are you from? What do you do for a living? Um, do you have kids? Um, what do you like to do for fun? Um, how long have you lived in this particular area? Where did you move from? These are really, really great questions to just investigate about people. So when you're trying to learn about somebody, when you're trying to find common ground, when you're trying to just dig into someone, who they are, where they've been, um, what makes them tick, that's when these open-ended questions are best utilized. Now, can you use open-ended questions to investigate other things? Can you use open-ended questions in negotiations? Can you use open-ended questions when you're trying to investigate the wants and needs of a person when it comes to a particular product or service? You certainly can, although I found that open-ended questions are usually best when they're conversational. They're usually best when you're investigating people. There are other type of questions that we will discuss later that can really help you when you're trying to investigate services, products, you're trying to qualify your customer, you're trying to negotiate, trying to build value, you're trying to do those things. The beautiful part about open-ended questions is they're typically the most natural. They don't have to be learned so much as some of the other question types. So just think about how you've been asking questions your entire life, how you've been bonding with other human beings. You've been using open-ended questions 
um, naturally, probably for most of your life. So this is the question type that comes easiest to most people. It's important to remember there are advantages and disadvantages to all question types. With open-ended questions, we've discussed a lot of the advantages so far, such as bonding with your customer, um, helping with the core influencer of liking and familiarity, um, helping you get to know people, dig, break down walls, do those things. The disadvantages um, that open-ended questions provide is you can't lead the dance very well. Since you're not offering up options and a customer can say whatever they want and you don't know what's coming, you can lose control of a conversation pretty quickly with a customer. So if you don't know what's coming and if you're not really gaining ground with a customer, you don't want to use too many open-ended questions because you're not going to be able to lead the dance. They might throw a curveball at you that you're not prepared for and it might stop your sell. So you do need to use open-ended questions um, with a lot of caution, especially if you feel like you're already losing control of the conversation and the sale isn't progressing the way that it needs to, you can actually get yourself into some danger if you use too many open-ended questions, especially if you're not using them to bond, if you're using them to ask for the sale or using them to try and book an appointment or you're using them where you're leaving things open-ended and anything can come at you and there could be some bad luck there. So be cautious and use open-ended questions with caution when you're using them in those scenarios. Those are the basics of open-ended questions. Next time you're trying to bond with someone, next time you're trying to bridge the gap or find some common ground or break down the walls, um, remember that if you're just asking a bunch of questions that only really demands a yes or a no, it doesn't cause your customer to need to elaborate or need to think or need to do anything um, thoughtful, that might be one reason why you're not breaking through with them. You're not able to find any common ground. Um, so utilize these questions to help you in your journey. Um, I definitely look forward to discussing the other types of questions going forward as well. So we'll make some video series about those question types also that can help you when you're investigating and when you're negotiating, collaborating on figures, following up, doing things like that. For those of you that like this content, you want to hear more, you want to learn more, or you even want to work with the boss company, there's going to be details at the end of this video um, that'll show you exactly how to do that. That way you can work on your business, not just in your business. And uh, I can help you transform your business and change your life. Until next time, cheers.